Okay, so uh, welcome back. We're going to try a new section today. It's 9.8, partial fraction decomposition. This is going to be one of the more tricky things that we do uh, here in pre-calculus, but uh, I think you're going to be able to do it just fine, especially with your knowledge of systems of linear equations. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, basically, what we're going to be doing is working backwards from a completed fraction like this into parts like this. Now, if we were to go ahead and, and add these two fractions together, we would have to get common denominators. You would multiply both, um, both terms by the common denominator, or the part that's missing, giving us some uh, good, good stuff there. And then we multiply it all together, simplify it, and we get to here. For with partial fractions, we're going to be breaking this down. Um, especially working with the denominator of 2x squared minus x minus 1. So we're going to break it into parts and then figure out what goes on top. Now there's four cases that we're going to be using. Um, case 1 is where the denominator is a distinct linear factor, and that's all we're going to do in this lesson. And then in uh, <clears throat> case 2, we have repeated linear factors, which we'll do on uh, Tuesday. And then case three is quadratic factors that are not repeated, and case four is quadratic factors that are repeated. So it's going to be just a process, and we're going to go slowly, step by step through this, and we're just going to uh, start here with example one. So in example one, um, the first thing that we're going to want to do is factor the denominator, and this is already factored, so we're, we're good on that part. Second step is to break it up into two distinct fractions. This one here has x minus 2 on the denominator. The other one has x plus 3 on the denominator. If there were three or more uh, linear factors in the bottom, we would put those over there as well. For each term, we put a capital A or B on the top. All right, and then the next step is a little tricky because what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by the common denominator which essentially means I'm multiplying the left side and the right side by x minus 2 and x plus 3. When we do that, we need to distribute. So I'm just going to write it in here. I'm going to say x minus 2, x plus 3. I'm multiplying that term by it. Here I'm going to put in x minus 2, x plus 3. And over here I'm even going to write x minus 2 and x plus 3. Now why do we do that? Well, if I multiply the left term by it, the entire denominator cancels out, and I am just left with x minus 7. Okay, over here on the right, the x minus 2's cancel, and I'm left with a equal or a times x plus 3. The x plus 3's cancel when I multiply that second term, and I'm left with b times x minus 2. From here, it's just a matter of solving for a or b. We're going to do that by distributing the a and the b. So we get ax plus 3a plus bx minus 2b. Combining like terms, I got ax and bx, so I'll put those together. ax plus bx, and then 3a and negative 2b are constants, so I got plus 3a minus 2b. Now because these are both x terms, I can factor out an x. a plus b x plus 3a minus 2b. Now bringing down this x minus 7, I'm putting a 1 coefficient in there, we know that 1x minus 7 is equal to a plus b x plus 3a minus 2b. The good thing about this is 1 is the coefficient of the x on the left, a plus b is the coefficient on the x on the right. So a plus b equals 1. We also have <coughs> negative 7 being the constant in 3a minus 2b, so we have 3a minus 2b equals negative 7. Now to solve for a and b, we did that all last chapter. Just go ahead and multiply the top by 2 get 2a plus 2b equals 2, 3a minus 2b equals negative 7, the b's would cancel and I get 5a equals negative 5, divide by 5, 
divide by 5, a equals negative 1. If a equals negative 1, I can plug it back in over here. Negative 1 plus b equals 1. b then equals 2. To finish this up, I'm going to go back up to my original equation, and I got a over x minus 2. Well, a is negative 1, so it's negative 1 over x minus 2 plus b is 2, so 2 over x plus 3. That's the partial fraction decomposition of x minus 7 over x minus 2 times x plus 3. And so that's the process that we're going to follow. So where I'm going to do uh, two more examples on two separate videos. Feel free to follow along on those. Um, and if you understand it now, go ahead and try the practice problems, and we'll go over those on uh, Monday.